Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Onem. I'm a project manager and a solutions consultant. And on this channel, we talk about project management, productivity, and how to leverage technology for your business and your career. Today, we'll be talking about how to create status trackers in Excel. This is the part two of the video. If you haven't watched the part one already, I recommend that you start with that and then come and watch this. Today, we'll be talking about quite a few of the status trackers that we didn't talk about before. So I'm hoping that you'll learn something new. Come with me while we talk about status trackers in Excel. So just like the part one of this particular video, we went ahead to create status trackers such as in progress, completed and delayed, and we use colors to indicate what it will mean. So we have a visual representation, which is what a status tracker does for us. It's an easy way for us to visually look at our dashboard, look at our spreadsheet or our Excel sheet to see where the project is at at a particular time. We also went ahead to create some uh, check boxes as well. So now we're going to try to use percentages to see uh, where our status is at a particular time. I've gone ahead to copy the last three of these numbers onto these particular cells to indicate the hours that were expected to be spent on these particular tasks. So to get the percentage or the completion rates for each of those tasks, what we have to do is divide this, the completed hours by the expected hours. To do so, of course, we need a formula. And in Excel, we start our formulas with equal. We'll choose the cell that is going to be at top, the numerator, and divided by the denominator, and then enter. When you click enter on your keyboard, you see that it immediately gives you the percentage. We can do that again with this particular cell equals this particular cell the slash on your keyboard, this particular cell, and enter. And it will give you that percentage as well. You can do the same thing with this, equals this particular cell, the slash or the divide symbol, this particular cell, and enter. If, if you have more cells, what you can do is drag from this particular level where it shows the plus down, and it will copy the formula to the rest of the cells. So this is okay if you want to keep it like this, but for some people, we want a graphical representation, not just 67% and 80 and 86. We want it to actually show that uh, when the buy is moving or not, because now what I'll do is if I go ahead to change it to three, this is going to change to 100%, but we don't visually appreciate it. So let's go ahead to indicate our... Uh, bars so we're going to use data bars for this particular one as a status tracker so we'll copy those cells that we want the data bars to be in we'll go under our home tab and under conditional formatting we'll create a new rule let me just move this aside so we create a new rule so in this case what we're going to do is we'll use the first option format all cells based on their values so whatever the values are here that's what will indicate where the bar is going to be so let's see before we go ahead to do that we'll choose data bar where you have the format style so where you have format all cells based on their values we want the data bar as the option so we choose that where you have a minimum and maximum, you're going to change this automatic value to number. And the same thing here. The value, you're going to leave the minimum as zero, and you're going to change the maximum to one, which indicates 100%. You're going to go ahead to choose either a solid field. So what field, what, what color do you want the particular cell to be filled with or the data bar to be when the percentages are reduced or increased. So you can do a solid fill or you can do a gradient fill. Let's go ahead to choose a solid fill and we'll choose the same color we used before at the top. You can go ahead to do this as well, but I don't need that now. And then you see the preview here as well. And then you can go ahead to say, okay. You can see now that it's 100% because three hours of the expected three hours have been done, 12 
hours out of the 15 hours, so that's 80%. If we go ahead to change it to 15 hours that we've completed, it changes to 100%. And if we go ahead to do, say, oh, no, you didn't spend that much time, and we change it to 15, for instance, we see that it reduces to 43%. So this is an easy way for you to be able to do that. Uh, for the data bars, you can use the data bars to represent your status trackers. So now that we've created the data bars here, we can see that all of them are green, which doesn't seem very practical if you want to see a difference between the percentages. So 43% is green and 100% is still green. There's another way to actually create data bars that are a little bit different in color based on certain criteria. So to do so, we're going to use another formula. We're going to create it in this cells just like we have here but before we do so we have to copy down a few numbers because we're not going to use the percentages so let's copy these numbers and paste them here so we have 33 80 and 60. let me make that bold so you can see properly so now based on these numbers we're going to create data bars here as well to create the data bars we need to have a formula and we're going to use a formula called our ept so just like in Excel, we start with an equal to create a formula and our EPT with a bracket open. Our EPT is asking us for a text. So we're going to put whatever we want to use as the basis for the text into double quotes. So I'm going to be using this symbol with a comma. And the number of times will be this particular number on this cell so i'll select that cell close bracket and enter as you can see here you have about 33 bars that are in here right now and that doesn't seem very practical so what we can do is to reduce the number of bars just so that it looks appropriate what we're going to do is divide this l14 which is the cell by five in this case let's see by five and enter so now you have these bars that represent the number that you have in this particular cell but it doesn't still look like this one here we want them to look like bars instead of just ones a bunch of ones so what we're going to do to achieve that is actually change the font so now the font is in calibri we're going to change it to a font that is called playbill so go ahead to change that. And when you do so, you can see that it actually gives you a small bar that now represents 33. So if you go ahead to change it, for instance, the bar is now a little bit bigger because it's 50. So if you go ahead to copy the formula to the other cells, you can see that the 80 represents this bar and the six represents this. But the reason why we're changing from this to this is because we want a difference in the cells based on different criteria. So in order to have that done, we still need to use conditional formatting. Conditional formatting is your friend as a project manager or as someone who uses spreadsheets or Excel a lot. So in order to do that, we're going to use conditional formatting, as I said. So select the cell go under your home tab and click on conditional formatting and new rule we want to create a new rule in the past we've been using format all cells based on their values and format all cells that contain a particular amount in this case we're going to use a formula to determine which cells to format so we've chosen that particular cell there where we have this our data bar so we're going to say if we want this particular bar to change to a particular amount we can say equals just like we just like we've always done if this cell is greater than or equal to say 80 then what do we do so we choose format in the past we used to use the fill column but we don't want it to be filled we actually want the font to change so what I'm going to do is make it bold and I'm going to choose a font color. So if any amount in this cell is greater than or equal to 80, then we want it to be green. So we're going to say OK and OK. If we click this, if we choose, if we bring this cell down, 
We notice that this doesn't change even if it's 80. Why is that? I'll tell you why. So we'll go back to our conditional formatting. And in this case, we're going to manage rules. We'll click on the, the rule and edit rule. We'll see that we have the dollar signs in front of this particular figure. So in this case, we're going to take out the dollar signs and then say, okay, again, apply. And we see that this cell has changed to green because it's greater than or equal to 80. So inside can... of the rules manager, we're going to create another rule by clicking on new rule right here. We're going to use a formula as well to determine which cells to format. In this case, we'll be using a different formula and we're using and because we want to satisfy two criteria. So we open the bracket after and and say if the cell is greater than or equal to 50, that's one criteria, or if the cell is less than 80, then what happens? We close the bracket. Don't forget to remove the dollar signs as we did before. So let's see here. So you have that. So you format, and in this case, we want the font to be yellow. So we go ahead to say, okay, okay, apply. So we see that this one that is 50 has turned yellow. We'll create the last rule. So new rule, we use the same formula equals if this cell is less than 50, what do we do? So we take out the dollar signs. Don't forget that. We format, in this case, we want it to be red. Okay, okay, apply. So we're just gonna bring this up and okay. So what happens is if this changes to, let's say 40, it changes to red. If this changes to 80, it changes to green. If this changes to 50, it changes to yellow. So that's how easy it is. The last status tracker we're going to be doing today are these. They're very similar to these. The only difference are their spaces between them. So we'll be using similar formulas. In fact, the same formulas. The only difference is what you're going to see now. So just like we did before, we're going to use the REPT formula. We start with a bracket and then the double quotes. In this case, instead of using the single line, we're going to be using a zero with a comma. And then this number by 10, divided by 10, close bracket and enter. We see what it looks like right now. So with what we did before, we're going to change it to the Playbill font like what we did before so this is what it looks like now you can decide to increase the the color but i feel like 16 is okay so if you choose to do the same thing down here you're going to have 40 appearing as this 50 as this and 80 as this just like we did before we don't want it to be the same color we want the colors to change so of course we're going to use conditional formatting so go to new rule We'll use a formula. So just like we did before, equals if this cell is greater than or equal to 80, we get rid of the dollar signs. We format the font is going to be green. Okay. Okay. We do the same thing, conditional formatting. In this case, we're going to do manage rules, new rule, use a formula. You can remember we use the AND formula because we want to satisfy two criteria. So if this cell is greater than or equal to 50, and if this cell is less than 80, bracket close, 
and take out dollar signs again. What are we going to do with we'll format? In this case, let's choose orange. Okay. Okay. Apply. The last rule, use the formula again. Equals. If this cell is less than 50, what do we do? Remove the dollar signs. What do we want it to be? We want it to be red. We apply. I always like to put this one at the top for some reason. <laughs> apply and OK. So we see that it's green when it's 80, is red when it's 40, and is yellow when it's 50. So if we change this to 40, turns red. If we change this to 80, turns green. If we change this to 90, turns green. So there you go. So I hope that you can use this status trackers when you're doing your own spreadsheet especially in excel if you're a project manager or if you use excel and you make use of conditional formatting is a great way for you to visually represent your data especially the status of your data so if you have any questions concerning this please drop a comment uh, like the video subscribe and don't forget the bell notification because that way you're the first to know if i post a new video for now have a wonderful day and i'll see you on the next video. Bye now.